The 3D effects in Illustrator just got a massive update with a completely new dedicated panel, professional substance materials, rendering with ray tracing, and so much more. Join me to find out more about this and all the other cool and useful new features added in Illustrator 2022. The most exciting addition to Illustrator 2022 has to be the 3D and materials feature. It has its own panel, which you can find from the window menu. And this is probably the easiest way to work with it. However, you can also find it from the effect menu under 3D and materials. Now notice that we still have the legacy original 3D effects here, but I wouldn't recommend using these anymore because besides the new features being more intuitive, they are less likely to crash Illustrator as well. In case you ever use the old 3D effects, I'm sure you experienced a couple of crashes with them. Now, before we get into creating these 3D objects in Illustrator, I want to also point out that I highly recommend to turn on setting in the preferences. You will find this under performance and it is the real-time drawing and editing option. So make sure to enable this and you don't actually have to restart Illustrator for this to start working. Essentially what this means is that we will be able to get a live view of the changes that you do in 3D. So let's start with a simple object, this square. I am going to use the panel and choose Extrude. Once we click on that, immediately we get the object and I'm going to quickly make this bigger just so we can see it better. And by the way, you could already see that the real-time editing even shows changes in scale and proportions live. So the 3D object is generated as I'm making the changes. Of course, it switches temporarily into a lower resolution version, but as soon as I let go, it updates to a better rendered object but this is still not the final most refined render that you can generate. I'm going to show you soon how to create that. But for now, let's just increase the depth on this object and try to create something more like a cube. I'm going to reduce the size just ever so slightly and maybe reduce the depth as well. And there's a lot of cool things we can try out straight away, like the corner widgets, with which we can add these nice rounded corners on the square. But we also have the bevel option, with which we can add additional embellishments. And we can, of course, again, refine the width, the height of this, and we can also change the bevel shape, maybe make that also rounded. Now, to change the viewing angle, you will have to use this little widget here in the middle. You can rotate around the Z axis or you can rotate around X and we can also rotate around the Y axis. Fairly quick and easy to get used to this widget, but if you prefer, you can also find these rotation options here on the panel itself. Now, besides the width and the height of the bevel, you can even repeat the bevel, which is going to generate additional steps on that edge. And you can even control the space between these. And instead of creating the bevels outside of the original plane, you can even invert it by using the bevel inside option. Now remember I mentioned that this is not the best quality render that you can get. If you wish to add ray tracing, all you have to do is to just click on this icon here on the top and usually you will get the result fairly quickly. But if you want to improve the result even further, you can click on the little arrow where we can choose to create a higher quality or higher resolution version of this render. This can be extremely useful when you're working generally with vector objects and you want to make sure that the 3D effects are not going to be too low quality for the preferred print size that you are preparing your work for. Don't forget to turn off this ray tracing toggle in case you are still making changes to your object. Otherwise, it's going to keep rendering every time and it's going to take much longer to see the results. Now I'm going to make this object smaller and because of the corner widgets, it's going to actually end up being a cylinder. But I quite like the way this looks, so I'm going to keep that here in the composition. And next up, let me show you how Revolve works. So here is another object. I will just bring it to the front and click on Revolve in the panel which is going to generate a sphere. Of course, you can change the offset like before, so we can have it on the left edge or the right edge, which could also generate interesting results. But I'm going to go with the left edge and create that sphere. 
And here, because we have a very round object, it's even more important to use ray tracing to get better results and avoid that bending that we can see here. So if I select this and turn on ray tracing, we get a much nicer and shinier object. And since we are talking about shine, let's jump to the materials where we can choose from some free substance materials like this marble paint or natural gold or one of my favorite, the copper foil, which has a really nice texture to it. And once you start using these materials, you will get a lot of additional options for the properties of the material. And you can change a lot of things here, like color variation on the material, variation of the roughness. You can even add oxidation, scratches. An important one, which you probably want to play with, is the normal intensity with which you can increase the bumps. So it's like making the surface a little bit more rugged and uneven. But it gets even more exciting once we switch to lighting, where besides the four default options, standard, diffuse, top left and right, again, we can, of course, adjust the settings manually. So for instance, we can move the light around. And once again, we get a very low resolution version, but live preview of this happening. This is again, extremely useful. And then we can change things like the height of the light and even add a cast shadow, which by default is going to be rendered behind the object. But normally it makes more sense to have it below the object. And to make sure that the full shadow is visible, normally you would want to increase the shadow boundary. So if I zoom out, we can see how this looks and the shadow itself also looks really nice. But because of the settings I used, it still didn't render it completely. So I'm just going to switch back to the standard angle and then change the rotation to the angle that I wanted to use. You can see that there is even a fall off or the shadow is getting blurrier the further away it gets from the object. And if this is not enough, you can even add a color to your light. So I'm just going to use yellow, which is going to affect the material, but also the cast shadow itself. Now, jumping back to the object section, I have one more shape here that I would like to work with. And this time I'm going to use the inflate option, which is going to create this cool object. So this is almost like using bevel without the extrude feature. And when I turn the object to its side, that's when you can see it best, how it's created. And of course, again, we have a volume percentage with which we can control the effect. And we also have depth, which we can reduce or increase. So let me just turn this back again in space, maybe rotate around a bit. And again, we can turn on ray tracing once we are happy with how it looks. I think it looks great. And of course, we can always come back and change basic attributes like the fill color, which is going to again update straight away on the object. And to be honest, most of these colors look great, but I think the original cyan stood out the most from this composition. One additional thing that you should keep in mind is that you can actually work with groups when it comes to 3D effects. So let's see in case I use a shape with this color and then just duplicate it and maybe make it a little bit smaller by holding down Alt or Option key and then changing the color of that to something else. And just for good measure, let's just add one more here on top. Again, make it smaller and assign a different color. Putting all of these in a group by pressing Command or Control G. Now, if we choose Extrude, it's going to keep all three colors and allow us to work with them in 3D. And we can check this out with the ray tracing on, which will create these beautiful shadows here on the left side. And what I love about working with these effects is that we still have access to the original vector shapes that are still in 2D. So I can just use my direct selection tool, for instance, select these two points here and then add the corner widgets on them, creating a round corner, or I can even move these up to extend them, or I can select this point here, drag it in, also select this other one, again, drag it in, and so on and so forth. It's really up to your creativity how far you can take these 3D effects in Illustrator. There's only one property that I can't find, which was in the original 3D effects, and that is perspective. Hopefully that is something that they will decide to introduce in the future, but I can't complain because really they improved a lot how these effects work. 
I am excited to launch my 12 week long graphic design starter bootcamp, a unique self paced online training program for beginners. Instead of overwhelming you with hundreds of hours of video lessons, you will only need to dedicate a few hours each week to study. Most courses concentrate on a single application or tool, while in this bootcamp, you will learn to work with Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and XD simultaneously. Completing the creative projects each week will significantly improve your understanding of everything you learn. You are also encouraged to share your final designs with fellow students in our private starter community and even showcase them in your creative portfolio. Click on the link above to find out more about the bootcamp and how to get started. But now, let's jump back to the tutorial. Even though this feature has been around for a couple of months, it's still worth pointing out that now we have the rotate view tool option here in Illustrator, similarly to Photoshop, with which we can easily rotate our canvas. And this can be extremely useful, especially if you are working with packaging design or brochures with more complex folds. And when you want to get back to the original rotation or orientation, just press escape on the keyboard. When you save your Illustrator file as a cloud document, you will be able to invite collaborators to review your work. And now you will be able to see their comments coming up live within the comments panel. And the only requirement for reviewers is that they need an Adobe ID, but they don't actually need to have license for Adobe Illustrator. You as the designer will be able to see the comments coming up live within this panel. You will be able to also respond to them or even mark them being resolved once you made the changes that they requested. You can now also place Photoshop cloud documents into your Illustrator cloud documents and you can do this from the place option. So I'm going to select this one here and notice that there is a linked option which by default is enabled. Once I choose place, I can now click and drag to place this image in here. And this is going to be a linked file, but the source is not on my computer, it is in the cloud. Of course, if I decide to break the link, I can always embed this image inside this Illustrator file. But if I keep it linked, then anytime I'm making changes to the Photoshop Cloud document, I will be able to also update the link here in Illustrator. And lastly, a few smaller changes that were introduced. Now under select same, we have a new section for text attributes. So within an Illustrator document with this, you can find all the text objects that are using the same font or same font size or any of these other options here. There is also now support for two new file formats that you can place into Illustrator documents, the high efficiency image format or HEIF and also the Google image format WebP, which I can quickly demonstrate. So if I go to file place again, here I have a WebP example. Once I choose place, as you can see, it works within Illustrator. And last but not least, in case you like working with Adobe fonts, the good news is that now Illustrator will be able to automatically enable any Adobe fonts that are used in a document that you are opening up on your computer. So you will get this dialog box at first, but if you choose don't show me again and enable auto activation, then each time you are working with a new document, it will all happen in the background and you don't have to worry about it. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.